Psalms, high feast we sing, praise to our victorious King, who hath washed us in the tide flowing from his beset side. Praise we him whose love divine gives his sacred blood for one, gives his body for the feast, Christ the victim, Christ the priest. Easter triumph, Easter joy, these alone do sin destroy. From sin's power do thou set free, souls newborn, O Lord, in thee. Hymns of glory, songs of praise, Father, unto Good morning from Ascension and Holy Trinity Episcopal Church in Pueblo, Colorado. We begin our service this morning in the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer on page 355, if you would like to follow along. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for today is from Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household, if a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted. 
over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 149, found on page 807 of the Book of Common Prayer. Hallelujah! Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throats and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the people. To bind their kings in chains, and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all the faithful people. Hallelujah. Second reading is from the New Testament, the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forgive our sins as we forgive you taught us, Lord, to pray. But you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. Lord, cleanse the depths within our souls and be present, men, 
then reconciled to God and man, all eyes will spread your peace. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, if another member of the church sins against you, go and the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two or three of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of the Lord. In the name of the one who made us in love, who saved us for love, and who loves us still. Amen. Together met, together bound, the hymn says, and we are, as people of faith who follow Jesus Christ, a community that is together met and together bound both essential and foundational to being Christian. This way of being in the world reveals and gives voice to the way of the cross, the way of Jesus Christ. It is the way that Paul articulates in his letter to the Romans as he orients Christian faith and community made up of those followers whose hearts, minds, and lives have been transformed in the fullness of Torah, rather than those who are conformed to and confirmed in the world systems in which they live. Paul's exhortation to Christian communities is, while, while we are living in this in-between, while we are living in that time and space after God inaugurated God's reign, embodied by our Savior Jesus Christ, and before the reign is complete or fully realized here on earth as it already is in heaven, we, we are a people, a Christian community called to embody and practice the way of love, and in so doing, reveal God's future hopes for the reconciliation and restoration of all creation. For Paul, the church is now the locus of Christ's body, and through the church, the way of the cross that is the way of love, that way that redeems the pain, heartache, and sin of the world in an ongoing revelation, both to those who follow Jesus and to all those who are hungering, hungering for a way of life and truth that endures. For Paul, this is the DNA of being Christian. And we are together met and together bound. This is the way of being that Paul talks about this morning as he addresses the Christians in Rome. He writes of this way that fulfills the whole of the law. Paul says, love one another. Owe nothing except to love one another. And after listing several thou shalt not commandments of Torah, he says that these just at, that he has just listed and 
any other commandments are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Together met and together bound echoes and resonates with Paul's holy vision of the nature and the character of the church, that being Christ in the world, the body of Christ now present, that begins not with witness or teaching or ministry, not with buildings or programs, liturgy or music, but with the way of love. And it is the way that is interdependent in its nature. The double helix, if you will, of our Christian DNA is that we cannot say to one another, I have no need of you. Rather, we love as we have been loved, giving up our lives for the sake of the least among us, which is that double helix, which is that way of love. In Paul's vision of the church, we cannot say to another, I have no need of you, because we are so deeply a part of each other as the one body of Christ. It is the nature and character of the church, and we are identified by this way of love, this way to that, excuse me, that owes no one anything but a debt of love. For it is this that defines the attitude, behavior, and norms by which the Christian community takes account of its life. Paul's holy vision that he is teaching the Christians in Rome is built on the vision that Jesus gave to his closest followers. As we now see Jesus in Capernaum and making his way toward J Jerusalem. He takes time along the way to gather in those who have been with him all along the way and to give the kind of support and teaching that they will need to carry on in community after he has been crucified, buried, and raised. Jesus has been teaching about the nature of community about the nature of the reign of God as seen through the behavior of God's people. You must become like children. You must welcome children, placing those with no status, legal, social, or otherwise, as the model of humility for Christian behavior. Jesus teaches that we are to take great care in how we treat each other, for to cause another to stumble, or to be a stumbling block for another, is nigh unto judgment and is a death sentence. Jesus continues and is crystal clear about the depth of devotion and loyalty the reign of God demands and requires, individually as well as communally. He is also clear about God's action to the least and the lost as he teaches the parable of the lost sheep that immediately precedes our gospel reading this morning. It is about, the gospel this morning is about responding to the inevitable reality of conflict within the community of faith, that it is real, that it does happen that we can expect it. After this, Jesus immediately follows this teaching about how to take care or be present in conflict with a note about forgiveness, that we are to forgive again and again and again, over and over again, 70 times seven. So bound on either side by God's extravagance and call to forgiveness, 
Jesus talks about how to respond to conflict within the community of faith. Notice the burden of care that is present throughout his teaching, the debt of love that undergirds the actions that have reconciliation and restoration of relationship as the goal. Not the keeping of a particular law or the recompense for a violation of some particular law, but the restoration of relationship. Notice that it is steeped in prayer. See the freedom of the offending party to choose his or her own way again and again as the one offended continues to seek reconciliation. Pay attention to the model of response and behavior toward the one who chooses to leave rather than be reconciled to be treated as a tax collector and a Gentile, the lost, to be forgiven 70 times seven. Pay attention to what it means to be a tax collector and a Gentile in the reign of God that Jesus embodied. Who did Jesus eat dinner with? Where did Jesus go often? To those that were least and lost. These are the very people to whom Jesus chose to call into relationship, to eat and travel with, and then ultimately to become friends with. The rubrics of care outlined in Jesus' response to conflict is less about law and order and more about owing nothing but a debt of love. As Jesus bookends this disciplinary teaching and process with care for the least and forgiveness that does not end, he challenges us across these 2,000 years to consider well the depth of relationship he describes as essential or the DNA of Christian community. We are challenged less to think of judgment and in terms of fixing a problem than we are to think in terms of relationship, a relationship in which the members cannot say to one another or to anyone, I have no need of you. It is in this spirit that when two or three are gathered, Jesus is present. It is the debt of love, the fulfillment of Torah, the double helix of our DNA. For as the hymn goes on to say, as Christ bids us share, each proud division ends. The love that made us makes us one, and strangers now are friends. For we are together met and together bound. Amen.
Let us now proclaim together our historic Christian faith in the form of the Nicene Creed. If you are following along, it's on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, his only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Prayers of the People Gracious Lord, God of heaven and earth, through our Savior Jesus Christ, you have promised to hear us when we pray to you in faith with thanksgiving. Let us now pray. We remember and pray for the nations of the world that their leaders are inspired with your wisdom and courage to act with justice and mercy. We pray for this land and nation, remembering our President Donald, our Governor Jared, our Mayor Nick, and all those whose decisions affect the lives of others. We pray for your church throughout the world, giving thanks for all who serve Christ. We remember our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Kim, our clergy and lay leaders. <clears throat> By your spirit, strengthen them and all your people for their work and witness in the world. Unite us in your truth and love that we who confess your name may also reflect your glory. We pray for one another, for our families and friends through whom we learn to love and be loved. Thank you for all who care for us. Give us grace to serve Christ by loving our neighbor and our community, loving others as he loves us. We thank you for your unfailing love, comfort, and heal any who are suffering. May they know your graceful courage and hope in their distress. We pray especially for those suffering from any sickness, we pray for those who suffer from increased anxiety and depression in this pandemic season. We ask you provision for those experiencing homelessness. We ask that your wisdom, courage, and holy endurance be with those standing against injustice. We pray for all the first responders, civil or medical. We pray for all those affected by hurricane, fires, 
and hurricane force winds in the Gulf Coast, California and Colorado and Iowa. We pray for the unemployed that they may find sufficient employment to provide for themselves and their families. We remember with thanksgiving all who have died in Christ and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may enter with them into the unending joy of your heavenly kingdom. By your spirit, strengthen your people for their work and witness in the world. And these good things we have prayed for, give us grace to work for, and in the purpose of your love, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. Grant us in this world to know your truth and to see your glory in the world around us. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. May the God of Abraham and Sarah, of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit who broods over the whole of the earth as a mother over her children. Bless you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, praising thee, the sun above. Melts the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are Thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. 